Okay, so we've been doing the brakes on the CV900. Uh, front caliper, uh, front caliper, and then rear caliper, of course. Um, I've already cleaned these up, got the pistons out, um, had a good clean up inside, scraped out a lot with my pick tool, scraped out a lot of corrosion from near the outside. Obviously, inside, just brake fluid in there, so it doesn't really get corroded, but near the outside, this gets a bit of atmosphere, so a bit of corrosion. Um, so this all needs cleaning up to make sure that your piston, um, stainless steel, um, just like your engine, it needs to be a good fit inside the bore. If that's too tight, it's going to bind. If it's wobbly, it's not going to work, is it? The, 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 the piston's going to get crossed up and will bind. So it's got to be a nice snug fit, <coughs> but not too tight, so it needs to be able to move. So then here, these are the actual uh, brake fluid seals. So we've got a fatter one and a thinner one. So the fat one goes on the inside. So this is to keep the brake fluid in. And on these ones, the smaller the seal, smaller diameter of the seal, uh, the more difficult it is to get into its um, into its hole, into its groove inside. I don't know if you can see that. Let's let's see if we can offer it out to the camera and see. So there it is inside, and it's just residing there, as you can see on the right hand side, just sitting inside its bore. So having said it was a pain, that one actually went in quite easily. Um, then the thinner one. So this is a dust seal or a wiper, as it's sometimes sometimes called, and this is just to try and keep the crud out away from the brake fluid seal. Um, I can't often call it an oil seal, but of course it's not oil; it's brake fluid. So I apologise if I do one of my little Freudian slips. Okay, so what you may not first notice when you're doing this is that this wiper seal has kind of got like a double lip on it. And of course that all needs to face inwards towards where the brake caliper is going to be. So gentle use of the pick tool can be a bit useful here for just making sure everything's facing the right way. And I say gentle use because if you overdo it you're going to tear a seal. But you kind of guess that. So that's all kind of gone in. So let's get it up close again, see if we can see. So there we've got, you see the two seals on the right hand side, none on the left hand side. Can we see it's double lipped? Kind of, but anyway. So they're in, look pretty nice, look pretty concentric. So we've got the red rubber grease on the piston and on the, uh, on the seals. And then we're just gently gonna coax it in past the outer dust wiper seal, and then it will go just past the brake fluid seal nicely and then it should just carry on straight in. Now that that's how easy it should be. If you're struggling with that at all then there's probably still some corrosion behind the dust wiper seal and that's what's pushing that inwards more and making it too tight. So it should be easy. So again, when you're putting the piston in it just needs to be just nicely lubed up and then a little gentle push little gentle push and she's in. So, and if you have to push harder, like I said before, something's wrong, right, so stop pushing. Okay, so this is the other um, front caliper. We've got uh, we've got all the seals in, lead it up, and then we'll just see how easily that wants to go in. So, that one was nice. And, you know, the, the cleaner it is, the cleaner it is in there, the easier it goes in. So it's definitely worth that extra kind of elbow grease. You know, there's no magic potion, you've got to do the work, right? So. And then that's it. A little bit of teasing, but you know, that one's tighter, but it's it's nice, it's in. So, <coughs> that's those two. I can't show you the rear, because they sent me the wrong size seal. Okay, so we've finished assembling the 
front caliper and then we're just uh, fitting it up to the bike. Um, I don't know if you can see the speedo cables, are a bit we've got to get a new one of those. Um, so right, I'm not talking these, I'm just fitting it at the moment. Um, and we'll tighten them up, talk them to the bike later. Uh, so, Okay, so banjo bolt with a nice new um, with a nice new copper washer. It's going to go through the banjo connector and then of course the other copper washer, and then it's going to go nicely into the hole banjo bolt and then we we'll just tighten this up we'll it on nice and gently making sure we're not crossing any threads or anything you know apologize if you can't see on the way okay and then we'll just finish that off 27 meters is about there so that's fine that side's good to go, we'll fit up the other side. So same on this side, um, we've assembled the caliper and we're just fitting it up to the bike. Again, I'm not talking these up yet, I will do, um, but not just yet. And then here again, the banjo bolt, let's just make sure this is nice and clean. We don't want to trap any dirt here because we will end up with a leak. Nice new copper washer. And then, again, there, there we go, okay, and it's 14mm, just pinching down, okay, yeah, I know, salt wrench right, yeah, sure, so that's fine. Once it's assembled, obviously, we'll be checking for any leaks anyway. Um, on a note, these copper washers, these are about 10p each. Spend 10 quid on them, get a load of them in, and then, you know, because what you don't want to do is end up going, oh, I only need one, and now you've got to order it in, and it's going to cost you, like, five quid postage and packaging. Ridiculous. Um, so get a load in, and then you'll never run out. Just showing you here, sorry it's a bit handheld, but um, the, the, the screws that are holding the top of the um, brake fluid reservoir in, um, these were properly seized up, very lucky not to have rounded these off. We'll be replacing these with a nice stainless steel item that won't seize up again. Of course, before we start bleeding the brakes, we just make sure the reservoir is nicely topped off with a good quality, clean, new brake fluid. Okay, so I know I know a lot of people get, into, get themselves into a bit of a tiz about bleeding brakes and um, like it's some black art that's impossible and it's not. So what we do, we need a good snug fitting um, piece of siphon hose and then, and, and this is the bit where everybody goes wrong. Uh, we're going to create like it's, it's an upside down new bend basically. So it's just like just like the drain from your sink. Um, as the brake fluid comes out, we're going to catch air bubbles at the top. That way they can't go back in. And it kind of is that simple. So I do have a little magic tool that some of you don't have, which is just a little vacuum pump that can go on the end here. So this will mean that I can create a vacuum. And then when I open the valve at the top, the master cylinder, it should be moving more brake fluid than if it was just uh, 
you know, under its own power. So I can see, I can see bubbling going on here. So I can see fluid here. I can see fluid here now as well. I don't know if you can. So you have to remember that bubbling here could just be air getting past the threads or past the where the pipe attaches to the nipple. So I think we're past needing the vacuum now. So I'll just stick that down. So I can feel it firming. It feels different. It's not, not firm, but it, it's not just pumping air anymore. So I'm just topping up brake fluid at the top, so it's quite a lot gone in. It was getting quite empty. And then this. So I can feel that hugging up, I can hear it hugging up the pistons. Okay, so now that right, earlier on I was telling you about correct disposal of this stuff, brake fluid. So here it's just going into a, it's an old oil drum that got washed out. Um, the waste companies don't like mixing, they don't like you mixing waste. So your oil waste needs to be separate from brake fluid waste. Um, I guess some of the companies aren't as fussed about it, but some are. But you do not want to end up with 200 litres of waste oil that your, uh, that your waste reclamation company doesn't want to touch. Okay, so we're going to bleed the brake on this side um, in you know exactly the same way we did on the other side. So first of all, uh, we're just going to uh, got to get our we're going to get our pipe on there. Okay. Now that brake fluid can be a bit slippy, okay, so if if you make sure you clean that pipe, so I've just given it a little clean, and um, brake fluid is water soluble, so I've just given that a clean in some warm water, and that's it. All right, hold that still, undo that. So this is open. Brake fluid's already full, so what we need is for one of you to shout when you see some liquid go into there. I can see it coming down the bike. I know it's going on. Now I, I can see, I'm stood on the other side of the bike here, so I don't know um, if you can see this as well, but that brake fluid is much cleaner, isn't it, than, uh, than the stuff we had before, I think. Anyway. Yeah, that's good, isn't it? So. Okay, it's gonna to top up with a bit more brake fluid. relatively happy with that so I'm not saying it's finished but I'm happy with it at the moment so we're going to just lock that off and then again so look how little we've wasted through there right right sorry so what I've done is I've just put the vacuum on here I'm going to suck a little vacuum into it and it lets it go straight away for some reason anyway there you go little vacuum take it off there you go. again no liquid come out of there at all so I'm just end up with uh, getting vacuum off. There you go. All right, so I've got my little bit of waste fluid in the bottom there. By holding these pipes up, I'm just letting that, them drain down, really. And then, again, that's going to go into the waste. Okay, so, right, th this, is the, uh, this is the cover for the brake fluid reservoir. There's your dot four brake fluid. This is the inner rubber. Um, and this concertina goes down as brake fluid. Uh, as the pads wear, brake fluid moves from the master cylinder down to the pistons. That takes up the space um, instead of having to have air in there. And of course, we've got these two. So, those of you who have been paying attention will remember that brake fluid is water soluble. So, these go in here. Um, now, these ones, the, these go to our bolt supplier, nut and bolt supplier, who happily, their 
warehouse is between the workshop and where I live. So we'll just pick some of those up on the way home. So we give that a little soak in the water. So most of the breakthrough is going to be off by now. And then get them out, back on here, blue roll, give them a bit of a pat dry. Right now, now look right. The next bit is me blowing them dry with compressed air and it gets really noisy. This one will be easier. Okay, so we rely on this to make the seal. So we just need to make sure that this is all nice and clean. So free of dirt, free of contamination, corrosion, and most importantly, free of brake fluid. If there's brake fluid here, when you reassemble it, you will have a leak. So that looks pretty good. Now look right, we don't have the bolts to put this back together. So what we're going to do is just put it on to stop moisture getting into our nice, fresh, clean brake fluid. And we'll tighten it up later when we've got the new bolts.